Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, it's time to check the cold frames. After a relatively warm fall, winter has been all over the map. We've had rain, we've had mornings down in the negative double digits. As a matter of fact, the other morning we hit about 17 below for the low and then within 24 hours it was 30 degrees outside. So the cold frames are working hard. We've got some up and downs and we're trying to keep everything regulated. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to go out and just check the cold frames and show you kind of what I do to check things out, get some watering done and see what's going on because the Govies have been showing me some drastic changes between the top of the cold frame in the garage and the bottom. So let's go check that out. It's Saturday, January the 8th, and we have a warm day in Minnesota. We're pushing 30 degrees here on this afternoon after we've had this roller coaster ride of temperatures. So I thought it'd be a great time today to do an update on the cold frames. I'm checking the cold frames uh, not quite daily, um, but I check my temperature um, fluctuations on the app, the Govi app daily. And what I've noticed about the cold frames is a lot of fluctuation in the new cold frame out in the, uh, the garage. I haven't seen inside the uh, cold frame today, so let's just go through what I do when I check my cold frame. Now the temperatures have gone from down to about, uh, last night was 17 below zero. And now we're at pushing 30 degrees. So we're gonna open this up and take a peek and see what's going on. We are inside the cold frame. So let's see what we've got to look at here. We've got the water jugs and uh, down below there's a lot of water jugs. We have our top row with the lights. The fans kick off every uh, hour for about 15 minutes. Um, we got the big um, spruce down below that we collected up in the bogs uh, this past summer. A couple of uh, forests here. There's a couple of forests in the bottom uh, and a couple of forests up here. This is the Siberian elm trees. Um, I've got my azalea up here looking a little bit droopy all of a sudden. Yeah, some leaves falling off to make sure that we get some water in here today. Um, so it's so important to check your cold frames to make sure that you are keeping things water. And one of the things I noticed about the Govi is two things. One, the temperature up top is always hovering around 50 degrees. And this one's 50 degrees. So these plants are drying out a lot sooner than normal. And then the Go V on the bottom of the cold frame, just four feet lower is 32 degrees. It's right at the freezing mark. So I'm not sure why the heat distribution is so um, different in the cold frame, except for perhaps these lights maybe providing a little bit of extra heat up here. And of course the heat rises. Um, this is mostly closed off by shelf, so a lot of air doesn't seep up here, but there is a gap in here, a little gap in here. So I might want to close some of these gaps so I don't lose so much heat. Then there'll be just a little bit of a gap in here where this board does not connect with the doors. So we're going to water everything today, um, and I, I'm just not sure what to do with the heat fluctuation. My biggest concern is that these trees are going to want to go into bloom in like February. They're going to want to start pushing new growth in February because uh, I've had early uh, push of buds in this cabin cold frame before with no lights. And now I have lights on here and we've got temperatures hovering around 50, a lot of times in the 40s, but real close to 50 like today. And that's not, that's not great. I, I want the roots to be like closer to 40 degrees. So when it's at 50 degrees, will some of these roots start to wake up too soon in the season next year and want to do some stuff. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do some watering. So one of the nice things about my new cold frame is it's super nice and tall so I can do this and I can see what I'm doing. I can reach in here with this nice uh, wow, watering system and I can make sure that these are all staying really nice and hydrated. Now because of the higher temps up here and it's winter time so it's drier, uh, we're going to have drier pots. So these little pots right here are all my cuttings from the uh, middle of the year last year. I don't know how many are going to survive but I keep them in here in the hopes that most of them will. We always repot a whole bunch, hoping that we get uh, some, uh, some to all. I very rarely get all, but I certainly get some. So we're giving these a nice little water here because it is definitely dry in here because of the heat fluctuation. Really warm on top. 
and I'm just giving these a good water. Now, I have the next uh, lower level. I can go ahead and water these as well. And uh, I can see how dry they are in the top here. This is Japanese maple, super dry up here on top. Probably a little moisture on the bottom, possibly. This is in the mid zone, so I would arrange, I would imagine this middle zone is probably in the 40s somewhere. So I give, as I give these a good drink, I'm trying to think of ways that I can uh, manipulate my uh, system here to keep it uh, warmer down below and colder up top. And my fear isn't so much like I said right now, my fear is in the springtime. What's going to happen in the springtime? Okay, I'm going to get the bottom ones now. Now the question is how to secure this to make it a little bit less chilly on the bottom and a little bit more chilly on top. So what I do he have here is maybe the ability to move these boards over, there we go, and slide one more board in. There we go. So that's a little bit more blockage of air coming from down below. So it's not gonna just all seep up here, the hot air, and not hover down here a little bit more. So maybe that'll help. Yeah, we took off a good uh, six inches of open gap in here and plugged that up. There's still a little bit more here. I could put some insulation right here or another piece of wood, like even this piece of wood sitting right here helps a little bit less heat from escaping up in here. My other thought is maybe I relocate my lights from up here and start lighting these for a little bit for the rest of the, the month of January and then I can fluctuate the lights but maybe just the heat of this light you know when I come to this light bulb there is heat there there is heat there and so if this is 50 degrees maybe that's giving me two extra degrees I don't need so maybe I can find some new hooks down here for lights and warm this up a couple degrees and make that a little bit cooler. I would have to take my light source down, but I can bring it right down through the gap, except for I, I, I nailed it in there, but I left the nails open um, or not tapped in all the way. So if I take this off right here and I take all these off right here, I could reposition these lights. I wonder if I should try that. I think it's worth a try because at 50 degrees, I'm just nervous that's too warm. And if I can knock off two or three degrees, plus put some blocks into these cracks, maybe, just maybe, we can get that three, four, five degrees. I don't know, maybe that's a stretch, but let's give it a whirl. So I think what I'll do is I'll just loosen up one side of the, uh, of the uh, electrical cord uh, holder thing here. If I can just get that out, and get one of them out. Yeah, maybe it's moving just enough to get that out of there. Okay. There we go. We got the cord there. I'm gonna have to do that on this side too. Just maybe take off one of the nails. There we go. There we go. And then we unplug that one. And we only have only one more spot to do. So I was able to put the cord up through this center piece in here and have the light shine right there. Now the door is going to close on this so I can't keep it on this 2x4, but if I get a little nail or something right here or another little chunk of wood right there, we can go ahead and connect this and hang this right there. And then have some light just like that. So 
So I think I will make some kind of connection and figure that out. Let's do the other side. So they're still plugged in here. We have plenty of cord to reach it down here now, so I don't have to do any more finagling with the power. I just have to get these lights kind of secured in here somewhere. And so I can figure out how I can do that with a couple of uh, nails or screws. So time to investigate. Upon closer inspection, I have a really nice lip of a two by four here that all of these pieces of wood here, the shelf sit on, and they sit down by about an inch or two. So when I pinch off the clips here for the lights, they sit right in there. And now if I close this door, it closes right up and doesn't even touch the light. So now this light is gonna provide a few more degrees down here. Again, I can feel that heat with my hand. This one on this side is gonna do the same. We've got the cords up here, out of harm's way. And we can angle this light any way we want. We got a little hook up here. And we'll be able to have light in the mid to lower section now, darker up here, and, and, and hopefully a little bit cooler temps. Right now we've dropped to 42 degrees because I have the door open, um, but we'll seal it all up again right now and we'll check this thing a little bit later on. So again, the top parts have been 50-ish, 45 to 50-ish, and the bottom's been in that 30 to 32 range. We're hoping to get the bottom at about 35 and this down to 40, 45, and I'll be a little bit happier. So let's close it up and we'll hope for the best. Everything's been watered, everything's looking really good. And uh, yeah, time to close it up. So there we have it. The garage cabin cold frame has been checked. I think with the lights down lower and um, closing off some of that airflow, maybe we'll just shave off a couple of degrees. So we'll monitor that over the next 24 to 48 hours. I'll probably have an update before I edit this video and I can show you if the temperature has changed at all. So now it's time to head out to the cabin cold frame. I had mentioned in the garage earlier that we were probably pushing about 30 degrees. That was a little bit, um, well, wishful thinking. We're still only at about 24 degrees. I did check the weather, but you know, it feels so warm after yesterday's low was 17 below. The 24 to us in Minnesota right now, of course, feels great. Hey, let's take a peek at the vegetable garden that has all my bonsai trees in it. And they, everything has a nice coat of snow over it. So I'm super happy that even after some of the warmth, the rain on uh, Christmas Eve, uh, the rain we had the week before Christmas Eve, we lost a lot of our snow. But we've had a couple of minor snowfalls with an inch here, half an inch there. Look at the larch. This is the larch from up north in the bog and there's all the little tiny uh, buds that are gonna be ready to push in the spring. There's just so many of them, it looks so cool. So we got a lot of larch, uh, we got a lot of pines, we got a mugo back there. Um, we've got the Siberian right there. The Siberian is looking really nice, some snow on it. A lot of larch back here. Got some more um, spruce back in the corner. Uh, back there, there's the spruce from up there. We got the uh, white paper birch right there, the forest. Hoping that turns a little bit whitish with one of the uh, trees this year. And then I showed in a previous episode that a lot of my Minnesota forest number one on the clock was chewed by the critters. So it's all covered by snow now, but I'm going to probably lose half of those trees, if not more, because the critters are chewing. Even the uh, Amur maple that's back right in there. Right there, the Amur maple, that little V down there. You can see some really light. Let me see if I can zoom up on that. Little tiny nibbles on that one. But that had a lot of damage on the left-hand side, over on this left-hand side here. So I was trying to see if that could heal and survive. But I think with all the critter damage this year and that bad backside, that that Amur is probably gonna bite the dust. So there is the vegetable garden. Everything's protected really nice in the snow. Let's come over here real quick and I'll show you. I dug up another, another um, tree from my yard last year and just put it in a pot and uh, super big trunk. I'm gonna be showing that in a future episode. 
but it's got like a four multi trunk here. This is a lilac bush that's over 30 years old. And I took it out of the yard to make more room for my new benches. So I have a couple of before pictures, but this has some real nice buds on it. Um, after the chops that we had last year, we got a chop here, chop there, there, and there. So this was a huge 10 foot uh, tree, shrub, bush, <laughs> lilac. That's gonna be a very interesting tree if I can get it in a pot this year. This was another one, uh, much smaller chop. But uh, uh, we got some uh, lilacs that could be really, really uh, interesting this year. And the benches are still full of snow and empty and just waiting. So we head on over to the fish pond. And it got really cold this week, but we still have the bubbler and we still have the uh, de-icer creating just enough gas exchange for the fish down below. So that's really nice to see. I saw a lot of snow and no hole for a day or two, but then it slowly did its work and the rest of it's frozen. So that's in really good shape. We've got bunny tracks everywhere, mice tracks in some spots or the voles. And now we come to the, the cabin cold frame. Let's peek inside. The garage cold frame is super nice because it's tall, I can stand up and I can have a lot of access to my trees. In here, I really have to work to get in the uh, cabin cold frame here. Um, but once I'm in, I have some pretty good access to everything because it's not that big, right? I can reach a lot of the stuff in here. So this cold frame has been doing a much better job of being regulated throughout the winter. So right now it says 38 degrees and by golly, it's been 38 degrees or close to it for the last month solid. So everything in here is doing pretty good. The fan is on right now, making a little extra noise, but that's allowing some great flow of, um, a great flow of air in here so it's not going to get too stuffy. Now I have some water in here that we're going to do some water in. That jug looks pretty good, got some big holes. This one kind of froze a little bit, it was close to the door. So we're going to have to bring that in the house, thaw it out and get some new water. We're going to check our trees in here. So my trees up on the back shelf, uh, certainly drying off a little bit. You know, we're going to have to get some water into all of these. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give the uh, cabin cold frame uh, trees a good watering. So I got all the trees on the top shelf on the back part of the cabin cold frame. Now I'm doing some of the lower trees on this back side. They're kind of tucked in a little bit. I've got some of the boxwoods back here. Uh, I've got some uh, barberries that were from my dad's garden that uh, they were in a pot for the last year now. This whole year they were on a recovery mode. I don't have them in bonsai soil yet. Looks like we got a little bit of an ice chunk on this one. So that tells me that the bottom of this uh, cabin cold frame down here is getting pretty uh, cold as well. So we're not maybe at 38 degrees like up here and it's probably about 40, 42 degrees up here. So the cabin cold frame seems a little bit more stable with the temperature, but I still have to be careful with uh, some of the variations. And the water does help regulate your cold frame, but as you can see, I certainly have some, uh, uh, some of them that got kind of cold. So everything in here is at about freezing point. So this cold water is not gonna create too much stress on my trees, but it sure makes it hard to water when the and there's a little bit more ice and water in some cases. Unfortunately, I ran out of water. There's not enough water here to water all my trees because the bottom level of the water uh, system was uh, the coldest and so we got some freezing. So I have some more water in the garage cold frame that is not frozen. So I'm gonna have to bring some of that water out here and we'll finish watering the rest of these trees on this lower level. And uh, we might crank up the heat in here just a little bit so we can get um, this bottom layer to be uh, at that above freezing mark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this Govi, I'm gonna put it up here by the top tree, for right now up there, the highest tree, and then we're gonna go get some more water, and we're gonna see if this thing goes up in temperature up into the 40s in the meantime. The door's open, so we'll close that up, and uh, we'll see if we can get some more water and see if that temp moves. I'm back in the cabin cold frame. I grabbed three jugs of water from the garage cold frame 
and we're going to go ahead and finish watering these trees. Now the bottom trees are probably frozen pretty solid so the water is not going to penetrate too much. But we want to make sure that everything doesn't completely dry out here when it thaws out as I warm up this temperature in here just a little bit. So we're watering some of the final trees in here. Got the big maple right here in front of me. That thing's got some uh, nice radial roots at the bottom. We might be getting that in a uh, big bonsai pot this year for the first time, but I also want to do a thread graft on this maple. So I think I'm gonna do the thread graft this year and then we'll find a pot for it next year because it'll be fine in this wooden crate for another year. So that's one full bottle down just on that bottom section of trees. And we've just got a few more left here. We want to make sure that it has some water seeping in. We've got a couple Catoni asters in here. We got a couple of Catoni asters in the bottom there. There's one on the top. We got a couple of uh, a lot of these uh, barberry trees from my dad's place. We got this black uh, pussy willow here. And we also have the boxwood that I've been watering on this side. We have a pine tree in here. Uh, the Korean pine that I uh, worked on in the fall, I have it here in some protection. That could have stayed outside too, but I just wanted to make sure it was okay. All right, got some more ice crystals in there making things difficult with, with this, this uh, watering system. So we'll finish watering these, put them back in place. I'm going to crank up the heat just a ever slight bit, and then we're going to monitor this one over the next 24 to 48 hours as well. So just before I got ready to put the door back in place, I was able to check that thermometer. And that thermometer did go up to 40 degrees. So it is a couple of degrees warmer at the top of the cabin cold frame, which I expected a little bit. So we did crank up the cabin cold frame just one little notch. So we're gonna watch that and see what happens. See if we can get that uh, to hover right around that 40 degree range, which means the bottom will probably be in that mid 35 so range so we don't get any frozen bottles at the bottom and all those trees aren't freezing. So now we're gonna have to fill up all these bottles and replenish the cold frames. After I made those changes to the garage cold frame at about 6.30 in the evening, I went ahead and looked at the Go V results to see if anything had changed. And originally the garage upper was up at 53.8 degrees. That is really high, right? And then you can see on the low, the garage low was 35.6. So I achieved the goal of having the bottom a little bit warmer above freezing, but the top got to 53, which is still too high. I had turned the heater up just a little bit to achieve that, plus we moved the lights. So then I had to turn that um, temperature gauge just a little bit further down. Upon inspection at 11, uh, about quarter after 11 on the next day, 24 hours later from when I set this up, I had 45 degrees on top, 45.9, so just under 46, but 30.2 down below. So we're still a little bit below freezing down below, but up top, we got rid of that 53. So that's not too bad. If that bottom stays at that freezing point, I'm not too terribly concerned in uh, that one for the trees that are at that bottom level. But the trees up top now in that mid 40 range, that's a lot better. Now out in the cabin cold frame, I also turned it up just a little bit and I moved my thermometer to the higher point in the cold frame. So that higher point is just the top row of trees, not too very many, but if it does get warmer up there and it does get drier up there, I'll have to watch the watering of those trees a lot more. But as of six o'clock in the evening at my check, the day that I worked on uh, this video originally, it was up at about 44.6 degrees there for the cabin cold frame. So that wasn't too bad. Going 24 or almost 24 hours later, uh, about a little bit after 11 o'clock on the next day, the cabin cold frame was a little warmer at 47.7. Now the sun's out, maybe getting residual heat from that, as a little bit of the greenhouse effect with the few windows I have in the cabin cold frame. But 47 degrees um, up at that high level, not too bad. Remember, the water bottles at the lower level of the cabin cold frame were also freezing a little bit. So you know it's freezing temperatures down below. 
I'm really surprised at the 15 degree temperature swing in my cold frames. I just have to remember that moving forward for the rest of this winter with some cold spells. When we get really, really low, um, it's gonna be colder at that bottom and just fine on top. Again, my biggest concerns, Will I have pre-growth early in the spring with these warm temperatures? And as we do get warmer, uh, that top section will probably warm up as well. However, as the temps warm up, the heater won't go off as much in both cold frames. So maybe we won't have those drastic fluctuations in temperatures from top to bottom. I was able to make some minor adjustments to the cabin cold frame, but there's still a bit of a differentiation. So we're just going to watch it for the next couple of days. Uh, maybe I'll have to make a few more plugs where the heat could rise. I could put some more insulation where the heat doesn't have as much air uh, space to move up and warm up that top section. But the gap between the high and the low is a little bit uh, smaller now. So hopefully that'll help. And then we won't have the lights on the top of the cabin cold frame. So in the fall, or in February, I should say, in the early, early spring, maybe they won't want to wake up too, uh, too soon. And I also probably will reconsider amping up the light in that room, uh, that cold frame, I should say. I won't maybe go from uh, eight, 10 hours of light to 12, 14 hours of light as early as I might've thought before. Maybe I'll just leave the light right where it's at all the way through until I get these trees outside. We'll just have to see what happens. It's all we can really do. Any suggestions for the cold frame that's about seven feet tall? I mean, yeah, the top's gonna be hot and the bottom's gonna be the coldest. Any suggestions would be great. I'm gonna keep tinkering with that and see if we can get more regulation in the cabin cold frame or in the garage cold frame. And then the cabin cold frame, uh, that seems to be modified pretty well. We do have some differentiation between the bottom and the top, uh, but uh, levels that I'm not too concerned about yet because I haven't hit 50s uh, in that cabin cold frame and staying right around that uh, mid 40s and below range. So I think I'm okay. So that's gonna do it. Hey, take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and we're gonna catch you very, very soon on another one.